uh, problems. Okay, uh, I will uh, use that uh, PDF and also slide so it will be you know, covered fast instead of I am writing and drawing it. So probably uh, I, I believe that everyone have uh, or at least uh, you can download uh, probably the smith chart uh, once uh, you know, when you are doing the smith chart problem. Okay, so I am going to share that uh, screen now. Probably and share the presentation. I think I hope you can uh, able to see my screen. Uh, so as I mentioned earlier, um, uh, this is the uh, Plipset Smith uh, who have uh, uh, you know, developed this chart. This is used in the transmission line problems, and uh, the whole class in uh, last class we have seen that uh, how we construct the Smith chart by circle equations. Okay, there are two circle equations from the Smith chart. One is a resistance circle, one is a reactant circle. Why the first one is called resistance circle? Because it involves RL, uh, especially from the load resistance. Okay, so here uh, we have taken a load as a reference uh, uh, from uh, input to the load and the load uh, no, resistance or reactance we are taking for Smith chart calculation. So it's called a resistance circle. So another one is called a reactant circle, where uh, the reactance of the load Excel uh, is taken for uh, circular equation. As I told in the last class, this RL and Excel is uh, small letters. And uh, this is actually coming from normalized impedance, OK? Uh, so what is that normalized impedance? You take the impedance. RL plus J XL, Captain XL, okay, and uh, divided this uh, by Z naught, that is a characteristics impedance. That means to say, take a load impedance divided by characteristics impedance, we get the small RL and J small XL. So this is my normalized uh, impedance in the resistance and reactance, okay. So these RL is used in this circle equation this excel is used in the circle equation so uh, yesterday we have uh, analyzed that uh, when rl is increasing and excel is increasing especially from zero to infinity this is possible basically you know so my impedance can be uh, you know the load impedance can be increased from zero to infinity that is more practical case it is possible uh, if a uh, load is uh, zero that is called uh, short circuit line because i'm shorted the load and the load can be infinity that is means to say it may leave to open so it is a load is a infinity so this is more possible case it can vary from zero to infinity so in that case how my uh, these are the calculation how got uh, to get this uh, circle equations so that what we have seen in the yesterday so when rl uh, small rl is increasing from zero to infinity we can see that when rl equal to zero this is a big circle this is a big circle is covering all the area of the smith chart okay all the circle area is total area of the smith chart so origin is exactly zero comma zero okay so what is this axis for this uh, chart uh, similarly like what we use at x and y this is gamma r and gamma i okay so uh, that means to say uh, this axis for this uh, 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 you know the value of this axis in this point is origin and my the radius of this uh, circle is uh, typically one okay I mean to say this radius is one so what does that mean so if i write the reflection coefficient as a complex number as a polar format so this mod gamma is my magnitude of the circle that is the maximum magnitude can be one uh, in the reflection coefficient for a transmission line problems maximum will be one so this is my magnitude and this can be my angle okay so the angle part also starting from zero to uh, 90 uh, 180 270 and 3, uh, 360 is the full rotation so as i mentioned this total rotations of the chart will be always two beta okay 
So that also we got it from the input impedance equation. That's the two beta L, two J beta L. So uh, if you leave that uh, J, it's like E power J. So if you lay that J, this is my angle. The total rotation will be uh, can be uh, theta. I can write in terms of theta minus two beta L. The angle can be rotation will be two beta L. So what is this two beta L value? So if you substitute that beta is to go by lambda, and length is uh, starting from zero to lambda by 2 so we will get this value from 0 to 2 pi you just substitute that in 2 beta l beta is to be 2 by a lambda and length is length of the transmission line is varying from 0 to lambda by 2 so what i mean to say if any transmission line problems if i able to solve for a lambda by 2 off wavelength so that is enough for me to solve for any wavelength because the my behavior of the micro signal is going to repeat of every wavelength that mean to say this is my lambda by two another lambda by two another it's going to repeat i'm not going to analyze for all wavelength only lambda by two wavelength is enough that is only you no know, one of the reasons you no know, the angle of full rotation is uh, only two beta l that is zero to two but the wavelength total wavelength of rotation is lambda by two i mean to say uh, you can see this chart. I'll show shortly. So we will take this is my reference, and I'll go move into the uh, no clockwise direction. This is actually towards to the load. That is lambda by two here. So uh, is lambda by four. Half rotation, full rotation is lambda by two. Okay. This is what uh, this chart is constructed. The full rotation of this chart is lambda by two. So apart from that, uh, what we have seen the resistance circle. Okay, when distance circle is increasing, uh, it is varying that RL when it is increasing, my circle area is becoming smaller and smaller and my the origin is shifted. Uh, for example, this circle, the origin will be close to here and this circle origin is close to here and this circle origin is close to here. So what happens when RL is increasing, my area is decreasing and my origin of the circle is shifted to the right. And when the reactant circle, uh, if I mean to say when I put XL equal to zero and uh, what happens, so my origin is one comma infinity. So probably that circle is, doesn't exist because the, uh, if you see that where I can represent one comma zero, probably this one, this is my zero comma zero origin, probably this is one comma zero. So where it will be exist, infinity is not exist. So it will be somewhere in the uh, here. Or axis somewhere, somewhere here, one comma infinity is there. That is not determined. So that is a circle here that is not deterministic circle. So that is XL comma zero. When XL is increasing, well, get a slowly the circle is formed outside, like keeping origin here. So slowly formed outside. This is XL comma uh, equal to one. This is XL equals to two. And <laughs> it's a negative side. Uh, I will get one and uh, XL can be a kind of reactance can be a negative, right? So resistance, we may not use that as a negative, negative resistance load. You may be get the negative resistance probably in the feedback amplifier structure, but in the transmission line, the load normally it is a positive resistance. Okay, the this can be negative, that uh, reactance can be negative, 100 plus uh, J100, ohms or it can be minus j under ohms so, so both are possible so if it is a negative reaction so it will come like a one comma okay again because the origin always you know this is or this origin of this uh, reactant structure always one this can be negative so that can be negative uh, j possible one comma minus 0.5 is possible so one is here so negative is here minus 0.5 the circle can form in top and bottom that is a reactant circle okay so it becomes smaller and smaller and uh, when it becomes smaller and smaller what happens to the origin actually it is coming down like how the resistance is going from left to right the reactants origin actually coming top from the to the near to the uh, horizontal axis here from down to the top to the horizontal axis this is a construction of smith chart what we have seen and you can see that this is a actual smith chart okay we have a positive excel circles uh, and uh, these rl circles 
no this is my sorry uh, this is my oral circle you can see that this is one circle okay this is one circle this is called uh, uh, is between point 0.2 and point 0.4 this is a point 0.3 circle okay so if i take uh, another circle let us take this circle so this is typically 0.9 if you take point 0.2 uh, probably my mouse handwriting is not uh, very uh, very coming clearly as like a circle but you can uh, write it basically okay so you can easily identify so if i take this this is my r equal to 2.0 circle okay so that is my reactant circle uh, this is my let us take this is 0.6 is my reactance always going to 0.6 here you can see the reactance values also here 0 0.6 0 0.7 1.4 like that so if you put the straight line connecting for example here this is uh, one the excel value is one. so this is a reactant uh, reactant circle this is a negative excel reactant circles okay so here uh, another point is i try to say that when uh, outer scale what is that so when I say the outer scale here, the wavelength is towards to the generator. Okay, I can take this uh, from, uh, uh, this is my load, uh, because I know uh, started load is uh, 0, 0, it started basically. So normally the outermost scale, whatever I am uh, going towards to the generator. Okay, this is actually um, what we say that uh, the clockwise direction. So here towards the generator, you can say that uh, 0 0.07, 0 0.007, 0 0047, 0 0.15, uh, 0 0.22, 0 0.25. So this is still from here to here, this lambda by 4, quarter wavelength. From here to here, it is lambda by 4, not x, this is lambda. Okay, this is lambda. okay this is lambda by 4 so total is lambda by 2 that is a rotation okay so here uh, if you mean to say if you take the load is 2 minus j l that is normally load uh, how I can represent in this mid chart so here uh, the slide is actually very nice you can see that in textbook whatever format it may be so actual uh, impedance, uh, probably some impedance, but normalized impedance if I take 2 minus JL. So how I can represent in this chart? So I have to go to R equal to 2 circle, okay? Where is the R equal to 2 circle is here, okay? So this is R equal to 2 circle. So in that, I have to choose that minus JL. That is my reactance. So where is my reactance? The reactance all the way, this is all positive reactance. The negative reactance is the bottom. So if I go into J1, this is my J1 in the negative axis. So this is my J1. Both this is where it is connected, okay, where it is overlapping. Okay, what is the intersection of these two lines? One is a circle, one is a, again the circle, but the circle outside it is connected basically. Uh, if you take that uh, you know, intersection of two circle, this is nothing but the point P for a given load okay so i think this is hope this is clear and angle part also you can understand uh, starting from uh, construction of the smith chart so all the way the angle is uh, is given something like this uh, 60 degree 90 degree 100 starting from zero degree here okay so angle is uh, as usual what you do it in the polar this is zero degree 90 180 for total rotation but wavelength then you take it from a clockwise direction okay the reason is that uh, i can analyze it probably with the equations uh, probably this length is uh, uh, no, theta minus 2 beta l that is the angle when you take that length uh, no if you because the angle is negative axis uh, the length is will be taken whenever it is taken clockwise the angle is taken as the reverse okay that is one of the reason but you can uh, with the scale also you can understand and also it is uh, no, written very clearly this is wavelength towards the generator is a clockwise and uh, this is wavelength towards to the generate uh, towards to the load if you rotate uh, kind of anti clockwise okay that is wavelength 
towards to the load you are starting from the here this point and if you are moving towards to the load i have to rotate the smith chart into the anti clockwise if it start from the load to moves to the generator this is my <coughs> clockwise this is my clockwise this is counter clockwise okay so keep it in this mind and we can <coughs> write the um do the problem smith chart and another one of uh, <coughs> important thing is so since i know that uh, this is v max by v minimum is uh, s standing wave ratio this is one plus gamma and one minus gamma so what i can do uh, uh, with that in the smith chart so i can um, take that point or whatever point here you know let us take this is my p the point which is intersect of two circle and minus j1 so if i put take this is origin and if you put the circle this is called sw circle okay simple as that uh, and <coughs> When you come to that, uh, no, uh, this is all you have seen that 2j beta l and theta minus 2j. Beta, I just told this. This is my, uh, you know, uh, the calculations now. So if you uh, see that, okay, this is put a VSWR circle. So uh, if you go into the right side, it will give you the SWR straight away. So that looks uh, understandable. So whenever this SWR circle is con connected with the right side of the uh, horizontal axis, that is called SWR. Okay. So you can ask me how it is. Uh, so since we are normalizing it, uh, and uh, this is actually the uh, V max by V minimum, we can also uh, theoretically also can show that. But in a scale wise, you can also understand where it is connected with the SWR. That we will see it. And coming to the wavelength, uh, you know, when you extend these points to the outside scale, this is connected to 0.287 lambda. Okay, that is actually the wavelength presented on to the load here, 0.287 lambda. Okay, so when you are moving the 0.1 lambda towards to the generator, that is a clockwise. So we'll get another lambda. So this is in this point. Uh, you have the the wavelength of the signal is 0.387 lambda is that clear this is my the wavelength or the load what is this wavelength and what is this wavelength what is actually physically meaning so when you take that off wavelength uh, this is my zero this is my lambda by two means 0.5 lambda so 0.28 lambda will closely come uh, no, here okay more than 0.25 and 0.38 will come uh, before 0.5 probably here so between these i have a, a load this is my the measurement where i am doing a measurement okay so this is my wavelength scale and uh, also i have just mentioned zero degree uh, as i said mentioned you no know, this is a short circuit line this is open circuit line so more you can explore that uh, because smith chart will do one or two problems only so that uh, more you can uh, and one more thing is uh, even case if i represent uh, this point in the smith chart i can uh, just write down it is uh, a reflection coefficient because i know this is a reflection coefficient chart with a gamma i and a gamma r in the rectangular format but if i write the polar format i will get mod, mod gamma and equal to j theta as similar if you measure the magnitude and make sure that uh, this is, can be measured using a scale, normal scale. Uh, so when I measuring this, I should not measure. Like you take a scale, uh, normal scale, and measure the distance between these two. That is not actually the full magnitude. So the how to find out that? So the magnitude of this reflection is uh, I have to normalize with one. So what is that normalization means? So I have to first take a scale and measure this distance okay now let us take uh, it is uh, coming uh, uh, no the smith chart that uh, reflection circle is coming let us take uh, um, let us take eight centimeter it is coming okay so this uh, uh, point from origin to here if it is coming two centimeter so what i have to do is I have to normalize this uh, you know to the value of one so what i have to do so eight centimeter you leave the unit uh, let us take eight so divided by eight, it will give one. This point is one. So here two is there. Divided by eight, it will give 0.4. So what it means out of one, so it, it occupying 0.4 of, sorry, one by four, sorry, 0.25, no? One by four, it is 0.25, okay? So 0.25, so magnitude is 0.25. 
so the out of one it is occupying point two five of the one magnitude so this is my reflection coefficients magnitude not two centimeter it is point two five is a my reflection coefficient magnitude okay so and similarly what is the angle angle is very straightforward uh, it can be easily measured just uh, you just take an angle of from here to here that is 53 degree so the what is the gamma a is here as given as 0.5 and e per j 53 it is simply 53 is the angle okay similarly you can do b also this is 0.54 the magnitude but angle is what 180 plus this angle so it will be given in the smith chart scale you can put one straight line here it will test to outer scale you can measure the angle straight away you can write what is this uh, the point in the reflection what is the point what is the reflection in that point and the vswr what you have to do just put on circle and where it is connected to the right side that is a vswr and come so this can be easily calculated so this is also relation you know okay this all thing everything is there uh, d max and d minimum is not necessary as of now but it's better to know that uh, <clears throat> okay so uh, i'll just spend two three two minutes in that just uh, know if i uh, have a uh, for example uh, if i have a point here i put a vswr uh, circle here and uh, s is uh, what it mentioned is s is numerically equal to the p max that is how much power is coming that is v max that is the power and uh, at point which SWR circle intersect the real comma axis to the right of the chart that what i told the right side now this is just a simplifications uh, we will get it basically okay so how the vswr is a v max by v minimum if you just put right side of the circle where it is connected that is a p max this is where it's the left side which is a p minimum in it uh no this is my vswr straight away you can write this is 2.6 is my vswr and the total rotation i told that is a 2 pi if you take uh, n is one or uh, two three this total rotation is pi so here uh, uh, what is the maximum and minimum distance so when i uh, measure that uh, no is that if when you just put that two plus j one means what it is a r is two this is my resistance circle and j one is a reactant circle okay both is connected here this is my point a okay this is a point a and <coughs> where this maximum so what i have to do is this is my zero lambda this is my 0.25 lambda okay so where i will get the maximum is at 0.25 is what is the distance between these two that is my maximum where i will get the minimum basically okay so why it is called maximum is uh, this wavelength so where i will get the maximum power that is v max that is my the maximum distance uh, i will get that means to say if i keep the load is here uh, for example, how this waveform will look like something like this is I will get a maximum, this I will get minimum, something like that. Okay, this is my V max. No need to much uh, do that for a problem, just for a uh, no analysis of Smith chart. I'm giving it the problem is uh, we will see that. Okay, this is my the maximum voltage where which distance it will happen exactly at uh, 0 0.03 lambda. From this low to here, 0 0.3203 lambda, I'll get a maximum. Where I'll get a minimum, minimum of Vmax, I will get in the D minimum. From here to here, I have to what I have to do? I have to do the full rotation of till it gets minimum. So this is 0 0.25, and this is uh, 0 0.037. When you add this, you'll get 0 0.2. 87 lambda okay so that is a maximum distance uh, sorry that is a minimum distance you will get it from where the v max will v minimum where it will get a v max okay so admission admittance start how to convert from impedance to admittance it is not necessary actually so this is a problem okay so uh, let us
kind of uh, see that. So, so thinking that, that maybe somebody wants to join. Okay. okay. I hope it is uh, clear. If any doubt still, uh, tell me that. I will repeat some points here, but uh, make sure that you are able to get this in the chat. Okay. Probably I will just open the original Smith chart. I, I think you can understand it better. Uh, so in, in the problems, you know, in the exams, either uh, now in the internals or externals, just try to first you know, uh, analyze the Smith chart, where all the axes are present and uh, where to mark it and uh, where to move that in the Smith chart. So that way we can uh, uh, you know, uh, do the problem so i'm trying to open the actual smith chart how it will look like okay i'm just sharing the screen of smith chart can you see the smith chart full smith chart now this is what we will get it this is one of the company they are making uh, now this smith chart has to be scaled correctly and printed if wrongly printed we'll get a wrong value okay if it is a uh, resizing no image resizing is there then we'll get a uh, not accurate value so it has to be printed on the same size whatever it is given in the smith chart okay. so so if i analyze this smith chart this what chart only normally will get it in the main exam also you can see that uh, it is quite uh, first uh, it may look many lines but if you closely observe uh, you can easily identify this is my zero starting from uh, here and uh, here okay this is uh, wavelength and moving towards to the generators to the clockwise directions and my wavelength 0 to 0.25 here and uh, my angle is changing from zero degree uh, for example, you can see this is my angle of reflection coefficient in degree 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, like that. Okay. And uh, this is my arc circle. This is all arc circle now. Um, we can identify probably uh, the annotations. Uh, we can just make it here probably. Okay. So this is my arc circle. And one, this is two, three, four, five, ten, like that. This is my reactant circle, point one, point two, point three. And also in my chart, they would be giving the scales in the bottom. Okay, they, this will also you can cross check. Uh, for example, I uh, know I I told uh, if you put a, a center point, uh, its origin and uh, any points, if you put a circle, that becomes a VSWR circle. So whichever connected to the right side of the horizontal axis v max this is v minimum so that uh, that is power is maximum so that v max is taken as a SWR because we are normalized it so uh, that is actually that whatever the right side we are getting the value that is vsgr you can also look you can put on a horizontal line and you can see it here in vsgr uh, for uh, probably you know uh, somewhere uh, here typically this is mentioned in the here either way you can do it either uh, finding out right side of this or from the base how to do it you may draw one circle here put on line and which line is connected to here that will give the vsw this is our vswr value okay at origin it is one so why it is one because gamma equal to zero and gamma equal to zero one plus zero by one minus zero it is one so vsw is one when it's going to, uh, you know, or uh, here one, gamma is equals to one, worst case in the outer scale. So one, uh, one plus one divided by one minus one, it is infinity. So SWR become infinity. You can find out SWR, you put the horizontal line and where it is connected, that is SWR. And also reflection also can be calculated. I told you take that maximum eight centimeter and two centimeter means two by eight, you do it 0.125, uh, 0.25, right? 0.25. That is wave gamma or else what you can do is again um, uh, the scale is there no you just vswr scale is there so what you can put uh, you can you are putting on straight line so that line is uh, connected to swr 
and the same line you just extend to reflection coefficients for example here this this one okay these are reflection coefficients so when s equals to 1 gamma equal to 0 when uh, s equals to infinity gamma is 1 or in other words when gamma equal to 0 s equals to 1 when uh, gamma is equals to 1 s equals to infinity so you can either put straight line and you can find out easily. So what is the gamma and SWR and easily can find out. So others are may not be necessary. These transmission coefficients are also not necessary. The main uh, things we use it is SWR and reflection coefficient in this case. Okay, this is my uh, actual smith chart what I get it usually in the uh, exam. Uh, how in the smith chart problem. Let us go back to the uh, problem. Okay. So is it able to follow? And I think I hope you the first time you are probably uh, when to see this probably you may have some kind of uh, uh, doubt but I suggest you to analyze keep analyze that and uh, it, it will be easier so okay so it's my chart problems will be keep coming and I hope uh, you can able to do that with a uh, very simple step you can able to do that okay so the construction may be a little uh, uh, more but uh, the applications is uh, no, relatively we can do that fine so so we are in this problem I think I hope you can uh, see the screen and uh, <coughs> So you have a 50 ohms lossless, means that what is that not is 50, characteristics impedance is 50 and load impedance is 25 plus J50. Now you can see the diagram here, 0.5 normalized it, but uh, this is actual impedance now. So what I have to do, the very first point is I have to divide this, the load impedance divided by characteristics impedance that will give me the normalized impedance. So 25 plus J50 by 50 and get 0.5 plus J1 that is here, given here. Uh, probably I'll just use a highlighter, laser pointer. So you can see that 0.5 to J1 here, the normalized load. So now the next step is, the first step is to normalize it. What is the next step? Mark that point in the smith chart. So where is the 0 0.5? 0 0.5 is, uh, I'll zoom it. And uh, you can see that 0 0.5 circle. Where is that 0 0.5 circle? This is the maximum I can zoom. And uh, you can see that. 0.5 circle, you can uh, place my the most uh, no, hand symbol. So, this is my 0.5 uh, resistance circle and J1. J1 is here, my reactance circle. So, where these two connected, that is my the load. Okay. So, in that load, I can immediately find out what is my uh, reflection coefficient. Uh, I mean to say, uh, what is the reflection coefficient here? I can use a scale and also I can uh, uh, do that. Uh, no, what I have to do, I have to normalize it. I can find out this magnitude out of one. Or else, you just put a uh, take this as origin and uh, this is, put, uh, I think everyone have a compass. And uh, coming for exam, what you do is take a printout. If you have a printout, a printer in home, you take a printout or you take it from outside, at least some four or five sheet, you take it and uh, take it as the uh, no, size of the PDF. Okay, so what you have to do uh, once I know A, just this is my origin, this is my the radius, put on a circle that is called VSWR circle. So VSWR when is connected here, that will give me the SWR straight away 4.26. Very simple, straightforward. Just put on circle where this connected to the horizontal axis, this is my VSWR. That is one step. What is the reflection coefficients of here? The reflection coefficients here is. What is this magnitude? How to find out the magnitude? Either normalize it or else put on straight line uh, to the uh, bottom of the axis. That's uh, like I shown earlier. So from that you can find out the magnitude of this. So typically if it, this is one, this is coming 0 0.62. Okay. So you can measure this whole distance and this distance normalize it out of one, you will get this. So what is the angle? So the angle is all the way from uh, 40, 50, from the right side to here, the 80, between 80 to 90, this is close to 83 degrees. Okay, what is the wavelength that time? The wavelength is 0 0.135 lambda, between 1.13 and 0 0.14 the lambda. Okay, is that fine? And 
okay uh, this is characteristic simply and what is the d maximum where i will get a maximum so where this a is connected to b this distance it is a uh, what we say is uh, d maximum so d minimum from a to c what is the distance that is a d minimum so you will get 0.15 lambda this is 0.135 this is 0.25 if you subtract this two you get 115 lambda from here to a to c what is that wavelength that is a d minimum this is a maximum uh, what we get this is a minimum what is the distance between these two this is half circle is 0.25 and and again uh, this value a and b okay so a and b how to calculate this is whole rotation is 0.25 subtract this 0.135 so that we, uh, when you do that so you get this so total is or else we can do total rotation is 0.5 and subtract this value from c to a then i'll get a b c this a to c value okay and uh, if you want to get a d max uh, we are taking a 0.25 and subtract this 0.135 you get 0.15 okay <clears throat> so now the interesting part is the input impedance the whole of smith chart is the importance is to find out the input impedance I'll just uh, tell you the significance of this calculation. It may look simple, but I'll just uh, tell you why we need to go to the Smith chart. Okay. So other thing is we can easily find out. Uh, you know, for example, uh, let us say how to find out the gamma L. This is a gamma L. No? At load, I'm finding the reflection. Can I find out the gamma L easily? Yes, I can find out. Gamma L is nothing but is equal minus is at not and uh, is equal plus is at not. Okay, the reflection between two impedance, no, the difference between two impedance is a reflection coefficients. I can straight away find out, just put the value here, I, I'll get the gamma L. I have to do very difficultly, you know, using a smith chart, normalizing it, put the circle, and um, finding the magnitude and angle, then finding out reflection, or using a scale, finding out the reflection. Why hard we need to do it? It's both, it will be very simple. But uh, come to the input impedance. The input impedance we write usually like is that not is that l uh, and uh, cos beta l sin beta l or if you take a cos outside it becomes a j is that not and beta l okay and uh, is that not plus j is that l tan beta l so this is my input impedance so how much hard to do these calculations just imagine the length uh, I can do this way also because I know is it and is it not and uh, of course I know the length of the transmission line 3.3 .3 lambda okay so I can easily do put length is 3.3 uh, .3 lambda not easily I can do it by using this method also beta is 2 over by lambda and uh, what is this length is 3.3 uh, .3 lambda so lambda lambda will cancel out i'll get a 6.3.3 .3 into 2 typically 6.6 6, uh, pi i'll get this beta L. so i can substitute and do it but how much hard this calculation and also imagine if it is a lossy case i will get a hyperbolic function of it so it is really hard uh, when you wants to find out the input impedance for a transmission problem but it's very easy if you see it in the smith chart <clears throat> okay so what i will do Input impedance is, I know 3.3 .3 is the lambda of the length. So I know the full rotation of the smith chart circle only 0.25 lambda. So I have to uh, find out how many 2.5 lambda is there. So I, what I will do is, I'll subtract this 3.32 minus 2.5 lambda. How much I will get? Calculator. So 3.3 minus 0.25. So I'm getting more again. Just I have to make it fraction of 0.25. How to do it? Divide by this. Uh, probably uh, 0.33. 3.3 divided by 0.25. No. What? How many fractions can I do that? Uh, let us take the 0.25. Um, uh, how much value is 0.25 times of, let us take 5. So I'll get 1.5. Let us take 10 times 3.3. Uh, 0.25, 2.5. Okay, 10 times uh, 2.5, if you give that 2.5 lambda. 
so 3.3 minus 2.5 So 0.833. Still, it is 0.25. It's more than uh, uh, lambda by two. No, more than 0.5. Again, subtract it. 0.5. So 0.33 lambda. Can I write like this? 3.3 lambda, which is again equivalent to 0.33 lambda. Can I write that? Can I write 0.3 lambda? Okay, 3.3 lambda and the fraction of uh, 0.2, 0.5 lambda, uh, I can actually, uh, is it uh, clear? I, actually, that is the name is there, no? We have to get a, uh, only the, I uh, don't know, uh, what we say is in the, uh, in the mathematics, we will take only that uh, factor of it. Can you put it in the chat, what we say for that in the mathematics? 13 times, yeah, correct. Uh, if I take, I just want to tell you, it's tell me the name in the mathematics. 3.3 lambda is there. I just want to make it uh, in uh, no, only that uh, 0.5 lambda. That is not 0.5, it's a 0.5 lambda. I just want to make it, bring it to 3.3 lambda to 0.5 lambda in the fraction of 0.5 lambda. I mean to say, is that clear? If, for example, you know, in the radians, uh, how you write uh, uh, 6 pi? In, uh, let us take uh, 6 pi, how you make it? It is equivalent to 2 pi, no? Because one rotation. So if you take uh, that way, I just want to make it the remainder, yeah. So what is the remainder? You will get 3.3 .3 lambda divided by just when you want. I get only need a fraction of uh, 0.5. Not whole terms, I can just leave it. So 0.33, sorry, 3.3. 0.3 lambda. Okay. So I think I hope I understand whoever not understood. Just what I'm trying to do is 3.3 lambda is there. You just have to need only convert into 0.5 lambda. That uh, the fraction you have to bring it because I know that uh, it is keeps repeated. No 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0.5, 0.5. So if you add that all the 0.5, it remain 0.5 only. So I just need a difference of uh you know the value in the 3.3 so only we'll get a as you mentioned a 0.3 lambda okay so actually the length is 0.3 lambda the remaining thing i can leave that okay because the 0.5 times of the n it become a 3 so the remaining is only 0.3 lambda so so that is a difference only i'm going to analyze it so the transmission line length it becomes 0.3 lambda so what i have to do is i know what is the load here now I have to move towards the to the generator. I know my load presented here exactly at load point A. And what I have to do is I have to move towards to the generator of 0 0.3 lambda. So the 0 0.3 lambda, how to do it? The full rotation is 0 0.5 of the smith jack. So what to do is here, I know what is the 0.135 at load. Just add 0 0.3 lambda. So it become 0. 435 lambda. I just have to go uh, in the axis where 0.43 lambda is here. Okay, here it is. So what I will do, I'll have take a scale and uh, from origin to here, I'll put uh, on straight line touching this uh, lambda, 0.435 lambda. Okay, now what I will do is when this line is connected with the circle, it is nothing but input impedance. Very easily, I can just do it. So what I've done is you know what is a load, which point is a load, and you know the wavelength at the point of the load, 0 0.135 lambda. Just add that. I mean to say this load is known. What is the wavelength is known. So just add the 3.3 lambda to here. 3.3 lambda is, is nothing but 0 0.3 lambda in the scale of 0 0.5. Okay, that I uh, have to move that 0 0.3 lambda all the way towards to the generator from right to left. So I'll stop there where the the length is uh, uh, approximately equals to the transmission line length. I'll put the straight line. So where this line is connected to the SWR chart is my input impedance. Very simple. So I can avoid these all calculations. These impedances, what it reads here is uh, typically, um, you can see that here, this close to reactance is 0.5. 
that is negative value minus 0.5 and what is the resistance so resistance is uh, this circle close to between 0.2 and 0.3 so i should not see the testable circle i have to be careful so i have to go to here and see in this exactly at c the letter beneath that so probably it is between uh, uh, more than uh, uh, 0.25 and close to 0.3 it's probably 0.28 something like that okay that is my real value and reactance value is uh, closely exactly this is a point it's closely 0.4 so it's 0.4 j minus 0.4 j and 0.28 that is my input impedance okay so this is only normalized value to get back the original value what i have to do multiply with is at naught that is 0.28 uh, minus j 0.4 into is that not is that not is here in this problem 50 ohms so multiply with the 50 so i will get this is my input impedance very uh very useful and um, that is a the, the main essence of the smooth chart i can easily find out the impedance from load if the length of the transmission line in the lambda is given and uh, uh, that is only the values i need uh, only load and length i can find out the input impedance and characteristic impedance of course we should know for a transmission line okay similar in this line you can do uh, many problem and matching stub matching everything can be done uh, coming to the matching what we need to do is uh, it is like a chess board uh, what we need to do is i know these are the points chess pieces on the board what i have to know is you know in each point will uh, you know reflect it is impedance and reflection coefficients and this circle is telling me vswr so i know these uh, characteristics from the smith chart for matching what i will do is i'll try to make this uh, whatever may be the point uh, let us say uh, this is my input impedance uh, i want to match this impedance to particular impedance what i need to do is uh, let us uh, know in this case only i will take if the a is my load uh, d is my input impedance and the input impedance for example uh, uh, these both are is there but i need to match these two impedance uh, or I try to match the impedance means I have input here, I have a load here. This is my given criteria. I cannot change it, and but I need to match it because there is a reflection is coming up because uh, I know that as a 0.62 reflection is coming up. How to match the impedance? Either I have to change the input impedance using impedance transformation circuit to make it go to the load impedance, or from the load impedance I have to use the impedance transformer and equate to the input impedance. What I'm trying to say is, I will add some one section of stub by bringing this A uh, and uh, to D before that, I'll bring these points to close to this center of the origin or uh, smith chart so that it is matched. Okay, and I'll go to here basically. I'll try to add this section such a way that so that section is matching the load and input or load and input. Okay, so trying to bring it to center, the point to the center because at the center gamma equal to zero so there is no reflection okay that is the idea of smith chart we will see it when doing a smart okay uh, this is another way of finding the load uh, probably you can keep on we can do any problems in that uh, uh, the one problem if you do that first one that is more than enough to go for another problems okay this is kind of another problem or i'll go to another set uh, we can do that again we'll see one problem of this and we'll go to other problem probably the time is uh, another five ten minutes are there so we can quickly see this problem this is a uh, swr is three and uh, characteristics impedance given and uh, first minimum five centimeter from load and distance between the adjacent is 20 centimeter so it is uh, uh, first in the centimeter is given so we have to convert into wavelength and uh, typically you know uh, i don't have any clue about the load where it is i have to find out is it and uh, s is given i put a circle here okay that uh, s equal to three circle now so i'll take origin and three and put on circle fine and uh, this is my swr and uh, d minimum uh, is actually given is five centimeters so what i have to do is i have to convert into wavelength so five uh, uh, divided by 40 is taken probably uh, this lambda by two is uh, uh, total is 20 centimeter the distance between adjacent minima means that this 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 is my minima this is my minima so 20 centimeter is given this is lambda by 2 
so whole total wavelength is 40 centimeter okay so uh, d minimum i have to convert first into the wavelength what are the centimeters so 5 centimeter divided by 40 i'll get 0 0.125 lambda since if i take uh, 40 by 40 it is a full wavelength okay uh, but in the 5 centimeter only uh, the distance between this minimum to the load okay that is a 5 centimeter so i'll divide by 40 so i'll get a 0 0.125 lambda that is d minimum is given and uh, d minimum is given means what uh, from the load where is the minimum will happen okay and uh, i know this uh, v minimum is here so from minimum to i have to go to 0 0.125 lambda so here okay because so i am going in this uh, towards to the load because uh, i know this point where is the minimum is happening that is d minimum it's happening at 0 0.125 lambda so i'm going towards to the load then it is a counterclockwise so i'll get here this point i put on straight line this is my load so that load is 0 0.6 uh, the value is resistance is 0.6 and reactance is 0.8 minus 0.8 multiply with uh, is that not that is 50 ohms so i'll get this is my load so this is again good problems there are many problems i told this is a matching i told uh, there are many matching this is beyond the scope of the syllabus if i tell correctly so i'll just go into uh, i'll share this mature problems okay <clears throat> that uh, you can easily uh no do that uh probably if i have i can share it now itself uh this new chart problems or you can uh see it in the course uh, website and how to do many problems with that i will stop now just analyze many problems and uh, this is a concept is like code this is the same concept original i got some questions can you please explain d minimum d maximum okay I quickly i'll tell that uh so the d minimum um uh, this is b minimum so uh, what is that basically if you take a load uh, some point okay it can be any load uh, normalized load so if you put that uh, no SWR circle you will immediately know where is this maximum power and minimum power this is two points is maximum and minimum power always so whatever may be my load it will be some wavelength uh, will be there associated to that some reflection will be there so when i want to say that from load point which distance i get this maximum power so that is a maximum distance d max so if i say that in this problem at uh, from the load of 0 0.231 lambda i have to move all the away of the distance of 0 0.03 Three seven lambda to get this d maximum. So what it means today, how the waveform will look like is, so in this point I'll get the maximum. This point I'll get minimum like this. So this is my maximum voltage power. This is my minimum voltage minimum power I will get. The distance from the load to the maximum is my d max. From the distance from load to minimum is nothing but d minimum. Okay, this from the Smith chart I can calculate. If I take from load, I have to go for a clockwise because this is my clockwise direction is uh, towards to the load. If I go from the load to the minimum, uh, maximum, so the distance covered is D max. And from A to P minimum, again clockwise, if I go the length from 0.23 to this wavelength, the difference or uh, the time to or uh, distance to travel from this point to uh, this point, that is D minimum because the total is 0.25 and this is uh, point just add 0 0.25 with that so you'll get uh, 0.287 also you can easily remember this uh, distance between uh, v max and v minimum is uh, you know in general 0.25 that is the reason of circle rotation is 0.25 and 0 0.25 plus this value will get the d minimum a to p minimum is d minimum a to p max is a d maximum okay i hope it is clear uh, there are many um, variety of problems uh, with this relying on these concepts you can easily understand once the concept where these all mean for you can easily do that many problems based on this chat i'll share the problems 
just analyze start analyzing it because the time constraint we cannot see every problem but the concept and approaching the problems remains same i can do that okay so with that uh, probably i have got other questions probably i'll try to answer that thank you sir okay um, yeah thank you and uh, take care uh, we'll see you in the next class ram uh, uh, madam uh, i just want to address the students uh, ask them to just hold on for 2 minutes and just uh, talk to them yeah. uh, yes ma'am good evening yes, everyone sorry good afternoon good afternoon good afternoon okay so uh i think after a long time i am addressing all of you uh maybe can you just uh, ram if you could uh, stop sharing your presentation yes ma'am yes ma'am yes. yes, ma stop yeah thank you okay so hope uh, all of you are attending all the classes regularly see i want some kind of interaction from you this is not just a lecture what i am talking to you people uh, i need uh, some kind of discussion in this for few minutes at least okay so you can just uh, text me uh, on the chat box so that i can able to understand what you are uh, answering to my questions okay uh, ram i think you can leave ram ha ah, madam yeah you can leave ram yeah, yes ma'am i'll leave yeah, yeah. Okay. okay uh so students i just wanted to know what is the uh, kind of uh, experience what you are undergoing through this online classes uh can anyone just uh, switch on your microphone and just give me a glimpse of how the classes are going on i think i want some some of one of you you can just unmute yourself and uh give me a feedback good afternoon ma'am yeah uh um uh, the class that going on uh, uh well ma'am i think uh, um most classes we are on track to finish portions also and i would like to add that uh, the new time table uh, works out well for us also okay with the 10 minutes break of each uh, in between the classes uh, uh, is it comfortable to you yes ma'am it is the um, sometimes uh, by the time uh, um, we wrap up things in one class and get to the next uh, the 